so what we have talked till now is the mechanical energy storage system electrochemical energy storage system chemical energy storage system electrical energy storage system and then we'll talk now the thermal energy storage system so the thermal energy system when we talk about so there is something we can directly utilize from the solar itself and that are basically two types one is sensible heat storage and then latent heat storage when i say sensible heat storage that means the temperature change takes place and when we talk about latent heat storage that means phase change takes place solid to liquid or liquid to gases or gas to liquid and liquid to solid when i say sensible it's only temperature 5 to 10 degree or 20 degree or 30 degree that changes phase does not change but when we say latent heat that means phase change temperature does not change much there many of the times the combination of both are also being used sensible heat as well as latent heat heat storage now this can be used directly from the sun also especially on the heating application wherever we have a heating application so this type of storage can be directly utilized through the the solar energy this is another way that you generate the electricity from the solar and then utilize that electricity to produce a thermal storage so a heat storage system that uses a heat storage medium this heat storage medium could be anything it could be water water is excellent heat storage system because of its heat capacity and the availability that makes excellent choice for the heat storage medium now where the addition or removal of heat results in change in the temperature so whenever i try to take out some heat that means temperature will drop whenever I, i'll add heat temperature will increase latent heat whenever i try to take heat phase changes maybe from liquid to gas sorry from gas to the liquid whenever i add heat then again phase will change from liquid to the gas or solid to the liquid so that becomes latent heat storage so a uh, uh, diagram here the portion from here to here is a sensible heating now from here to here it's a latent again from here to here is so here from solid it's getting heated up up to this now it started forming to the liquid up to here it's only in liquid form temperature does not rise now again that means whole solid gets melted till this level now the temperature started rising now the whole liquid is going to the higher temperature now there might be another options here that liquid is getting converted into the gas here so the sensible storage will work from here to here latent storage will work from here to here again sensible storage will work from here to here and then at the final the latent storage may work from here again there would be sensible heating that we say super heating okay so when i say the solar thermal energy then it depends upon the what is the solar radiation the nature of the thermal process physical and chemical properties of the storage medium which we imply i can imply wax also as a storage medium for a latent storage i can imply phase change materials as a storage medium so depend upon the storage medium we can utilize this there a chilled water system and this is what we are utilizing in our it madras research park so we have a 300 cubic meter storage capacity we chill the water to the 6 degree centigrade using the chiller whenever we have excess energy available excess renewable energy available and we utilize this chilled water to run the hvac system on the regular basis whenever i have a regular uh, renewable energy i keep on running the chiller to run the whole hvac system whenever i have excess renewable energy i start chilling the stored stored water to the 6 degree centigrade 
it could be lower also but since our system efficiency and other things has been worked out best at the 6 degree chilling so we use 6 degree chilling capacity the return water temperature is 20 degree that means if when my whole tank is at 6 degree whenever i had access of renewable energy i can circulate this chilled water to the whole building for whole hvac unit and the return water temperature comes to 20 degree so what is the energy storage capacity of this system e equal to or e storage i say or otherwise you can use q is mcp delta t where mass of water is nothing but 3 lakhs into 1 3 lakh kg cp of water is 4.2 kilojoule per kg per degree centigrade or per degree kelvin and then what we have delta t return water temperature is 20 degree my storage temperature is 60 so 14 degree you multiply all those things you get the thermal energy storage capacity now if you have to convert this into the electrical equivalent what you will do you need to find out the system cop refrigeration system cop on an average it works out to be 2 that means half the energy you have consumed to to transfer the heat from 20 degree to 6 degree c so if my energy thermal energy storage capacity is 1 megajoule my electrical consumption would be only 500 kilojoule for that one and it works out most of the time an excellent energy storage especially for the commercial complexes industrial complexes where 40 percent of the energy is consumed in this so whenever i'll have excess energy instead of putting as a storage in the battery energy storage or something like that i can always store because water is very cheap and you are not contaminating it or uh, consuming it so once you have stored only because of some evaporation losses and other things only a small amount of makeup water you have to keep on utilizing and it has very good water being a medium it has a very excellent heat capacity it is the best in all available material now the same the same water storage right now which is right now 300 cubic meter I can utilize it to convert it into ice also and in that case by the same energy capacity energy storage capacity would go almost 100 times more or I can reduce the volume by 100 times less so both way it is possible so the latent heat capacity has a very high energy density power density is also very high the only thing is that heat transfer between one medium to other medium becomes becomes slightly slow because of the change of the thermal conductivity or you can say mixing thermal conductivity also does not change much but the mixing surface area gets much reduced which is much better in the uh, in the form of liquid you can send it to anywhere transportation becomes difficult but the capacity wise it becomes much much smaller to provide the same capacity when I use the latent heat capacity there. So, chilled water storage what we use sensible heat capacity most economical system most of the time 200 tons hours it can give you the capacity a very small volume if you want to further reduce the size you want to increase the power density uh, sorry energy density however at the cost of reduction of the power density you can utilize this as for latent heat of fusion where whenever you have access renewable energy utilize it for this chilling the water which can be directly circulated for the HVAC operation whenever you have deficit or no RE. The only problem is that this system will gain the heat but that can be minimized using the proper insulation. Initial investment is very very low compared to any other type of energy storage 
in this type of system and the life is very long you can run number of cycles per day without degrading the performance of the stories the cycle life is very very high much much more than any other uh, storage system what we have looked upon right now a smaller equipment can be used in the local localized basis significant reduction in time dependent energy cost a good energy saving efficiency is as high as 90 percent of this type of storage round trip efficiency ice storage uses 15 percent more energy than the conventional energy system so that's what i say around 85 percent energy efficient and there is a heat gain in pipes and other things which can be minimized by using the proper insulation so with this i will summarize the whole chapter 10 we have talked about various type of energy storage system mechanical energy storage system chemical energy storage system electrical energy storage system thermal energy storage system what we have talked pumped hydro storage for mechanical flywheel energy storage compressed air energy storage then we have discussed in chemical energy storage battery energy storage regenerative fuel cells redox flow cells then we have talked about super conducting magnet energy storage super capacitor in electrical energy storage and then in thermal energy storage sensible heat storage and latent heat storage these all are options for energy storage and from where this energy is coming for us it should be from the renewable energy what are the services of energy storage technology why it is important for load reg uh, regulation contingency reserves load following capacity supply transmission and distribution loss reduction so for these things we require energy storage the type of energy storage so with this chapter 10 is over also this course is over and we may have one or two guest lectures by eminent professional in this particular field any question if no we can close this thank you thank you very much